Well, this is one of my favorite times uh, of our, that we have, and, and that is when we do baby dedications. And the beautiful thing about baby dedications is, is it's, it's the really rooted in the significance of the family's devotion to Christ. And we're going to give, they, they have a heart to return that child back to the Lord and to celebrate their devotion in raising that child for the glory of God. And so I'm going to invite the, the Coble family to come and the Moore family to come as we celebrate their children that we're going to be dedicating today. We're going to be dedicating uh, Kipton Andrew Cole and, uh, Coble, and we're going to uh, be dedicating Cord Matthew more. And so that's exciting. And we're going to invite the whole families. Just come down here and stand in the front, if you would, for just a moment. Then we're going to bring them up and show off the babies. Pray over them. The, one of the very first miracles I ever saw, just, just look at me and then we'll show you off to everybody else here in a minute. One of the greatest miracles I ever saw was what God did with the very first baby I ever dedicated. This child was born without lungs and had no hope of survival. And the parents, the grandparent actually called me and said, Pastor, would you come and pray for the baby? We just don't know what else to do. They're about to take all the, all the equipment off the child and the child's probably not gonna survive because it doesn't have lungs. <clears throat> and so I remember I, I went down there in the desperation in the parents' voice. And the parents really didn't know the Lord. Uh, their, their faith was really related to their grandma. And I remember I sat down with them and I shared with them the love that God had for them and God had for their baby and was their first child. And we spent a few moments and we prayed with them and then we went into the little room and I had a little prayer with that baby and it was very interesting because I walked in and that baby was connected to every tube and electrical piece of equipment you could possibly imagine. It was the most heart-wrenching experience I've ever seen. And I remember when I saw that, I, my heart just broke and I didn't have the capacity to come up with a really good pastor prayer. How many know a good pastor prayer? You know, we're professionals. And I didn't have a good capacity for a good pastor prayer. And so I remember I, I put my little hands on that baby and they were getting ready to take the last piece of equipment off. And I just prayed and I said, Lord, please do a miracle. And after I got done, I don't know what I said after that, but after I got done, I looked up and the nurses and the doctors there were all weeping and we walked out and, uh, and I just said, we're gonna see what the Lord does. And prayerfully, God will preserve the child and it'll be for the glory of God. Well, sure enough, uh, about, took me about 30 minutes to get home, and the grandmother called me just shouting and rejoicing. She said, Pastor, she said, when you left, it wasn't five minutes, and they disconnected the, the respirator, and, the, and immediately when they did that, the child immediately died, passed away. And they were just wrapping things up, and they were getting ready to take the child off, and, and all of a sudden, as she was reaching for the final little heart monitor, and she reached to take it off, it started beeping. The child's heartbeat came back and the child began to breathe and began to, uh, began to cry. They immediately rushed it in, went through a bunch of examinations. One month later, I dedicated that baby. It was the very first baby I dedicated. <clears throat> and I'm saying that because God's all about destiny. He's all about future. And that's what this moment's about. It's about you as parents. And so I just want to remind you of a few, a few thoughts. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 7, that these words which I command you this day will be in your heart. And you'll teach them diligently to your children. And when you talk of them, when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. And this is the commandment that the Lord, that, of the Lord that we should diligently rear our children in our holy faith, in obedience to this command, you have come to present your children to the Lord. Now this precedent, we don't baptize children because it's not biblical. We don't believe it's biblical to baptize a child. That's something that's done with knowledge, full knowledge and full faith. But there is lots of precedents for babies being dedicated. Started all the way back with Samuel. We know that Jesus himself was dedicated on the eighth day. And so that's why we present ourselves. But this dedication is really meaningless unless you as parents are dedicated to the purpose of God in your children. And so if it's your intention to raise your child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and bring them up in your faith, I want you to just simply answer, uh, we do, to the following promises. Do you hear this day? Recognize this child as God's gift to you and give heartfelt thanks for God's blessing. Do you hear this day? Dedicate your children to the Lord who gave them to you. Do you hear this day? Pledge as parents that you'll bring your child up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Do you hear this day promise to give this child every possible benefit of home, of, of school, and of church? 
And do you hear this day? Ask God's blessings upon their lives to guide, to guard, and to direct them throughout all their years. All right, then I think we should pray. So we're going to do that by just inviting the families to come up one at a time so that we can pray for you. So we're going to invite the Coble family to come first. They're going to be dedicating little Kipton to the Lord. And this will be awesome. Let's, let, let's give the Lord a clap offering for them. <laughs> awesome. Joey and Chrissy. Look at this. Look at this precious guy. Let me, can I get him? All right. Look at him. He's even got a bow tie on. I know those lights bother me too. Awesome. Look at that. Isn't he, isn't he handsome? Let's present him to the Lord together. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we present Kipton to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless him in his growth and his maturity, in his latent talents and abilities. Father, we trust you for the grace that is upon his life that you will keep him throughout all of his years. Father, I thank you that today your grace and your anointing is upon him. And that, Father, you are showing forth your ability to keep him in his latent talents and abilities. You're nurturing his spirit. You're strengthening his heart. And, Lord God, you're placing a hedge of protection around about him to keep him throughout all of his years. Lord, that he will never turn to the right hand or the left. And at the earliest possible moment, he will call upon you and know you as his Savior and Lord. Fill him with your presence, Lord. And let him be an influencer in his generation. Lord, give him excellence excellence at everything he does. And in everywhere he goes, Lord, let your blessing be upon him and keep him. Father, we thank you that today that the enemy that would come against him one way will not have the ability to do so, but he will flee before him seven ways. He is blessed as the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. And Lord, we thank you for that grace that is upon him even now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. Good job. There he is. Now let's bless the Coble family together. Father, I thank you for Joey and Chrissy. I thank you for their hearts to serve you with their family. Lord, to celebrate who you are. Lord, to know your grace. And Father, I thank you for giving them wisdom and faith and understanding in how to minister to their children. Lord, how to develop the graces and the gifts that are in their lives. Lord, that you're giving them faith and understanding. You're giving them discernment and discretion. And Lord God, you are keeping them knit solidly with the foundation of love and that this home, Father, will be filled with joy. And we thank you for that peace, that grace that's upon them even now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Congratulations. <laughs> awesome. Let's let them know we appreciate them. Thanks, guys. Congratulations. All right, we got the Moore family. Let's let them know we love them. <laughs> now, I'm interested to know, how did you come up with the name Cord? Uh, uh, well, he's our third child, and obviously with Christopher, we've had some challenges. And so we really clung to the verse, a uh, cord of three strands is not easily not broken. Easily broken. <laughs> I figured that's where it came from. And if you don't know, uh, Tracy's our financial secretary. So she's, she's the longest tenured employee of Church of the Harvest outside of me and my wife. And so uh, she is such a, a special treasure to us. Their whole family is. And I've gotten to dedicate all their children and got to marry them. And Well, I, I performed the ceremony. You guys married each other. But, uh, and they got a wonderful, come on, Cord, come see Pastor. Oh, there you are. Man, he's a slugger. Say hello. Say hi. I know, I get that look all the time, too. <laughs> he wants mama. So, Father, right now, in Jesus' name, we bless Cord. Lord, we lift him up and we present him to you. And we thank you for your favor and your blessing over him. Lord, I thank you that your blessing is coming upon him and overtaking him. Lord, that you are blessing him in his latent talents and abilities. You're giving him the grace and the spirit, Lord, to walk in the strength of his heart. Father, I thank you that in the very depths of who he is, Lord, he is a warrior. 
Lord, you've established him. You've established him in your name. You've established him in your grace. That, Lord, that he is walking in a redemptive spirit. Lord, that he is going to be that, that special blessing upon this family. Lord God, that is going to see the, the restoration and the reconciliation of many things. Father, I thank you that in him and through him there is joy and there is strength. And, Lord, you are blessing him as he comes out and as he goes in. At his earliest possible moment, let him call upon you and know you as Savior and Lord. Father, fill him with your presence. Fill him with your spirit. Make him a prophet in his generation. And Lord, we thank you for that grace and your spirit of grace that is upon him even now. The enemy that would come against him one way is going to flee before him seven ways. Place a hedge of protection around about him. Let no evil come near him. And we thank you for that protection and we thank you for that peace. Lord, bless him indeed. Bless this family, Father. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for what you've done in them. I thank you for the grace and the strength that you you've produced in their lives and Lord in them and through them and with their testimony and with this ministry that you've even given them and Lord God they are penetrating the hearts and the lives of some of the most difficult family situations that people could ever know and that Lord they're going to be able to speak of peace and speak of grace and speak of wisdom and speak hope and faith in environments and atmospheres that that other people could not find it because you they, you have burned something into them and given them a metal that can only be forged through what you've done in their lives. And so, Father, I trust you and I bless you in them. And I thank you that today, Lord, you have truly given them the grace to raise this family and let your name be exalted in them and among them in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it. And everyone shouted, amen. You're a rugged soul. Bless you, buddy. All right. Love you guys. Good job. Bye, Kaylin. Love you, honey. See you, Chris. You're doing good, man. Awesome. Love you guys. All right, let's get ready to get in the Word. Amen?